In only two weeks, these 13 St. Scholastica nursing students built nine makeshift clinics in nine different villages and treated over 600 patients. And it's hot. <laughs> and it's been a great day. We've seen a lot of things. And I hope that it continues to be like this because it's, it's been such a great experience. In each clinic, patients were triaged. Is it dizzy because of the headache? A record system was developed. <laughs> Two, four. A pharmacy was established. But what do you need? Um, warming, relaxed, dose, uh, sprays. Vitals were collected, wounds were dressed and cleaned. And people were screened for diabetes and hypertension. But it didn't stop with that. We just advertised diabetes, blood pressure, and HIV and AIDS, and you guys are giving a lot more than that. Just okay. have them set it down and rest it. Okay, it's gonna hurt. Did we found people with incredible problems with um, skin diseases, skin infestations, mental health problems, um, people with pneumonia, people with um, colds and flu, and sometimes just people who want to talk to some Americans. We're in the village of Santa Marta where health care is hard to come by. Behind me, this is one of the first few clinics that we set up. If you come inside, you'll see some of the action going on. We've got some of the students over here. We've got some of the patients that are in here. And what was an empty building earlier this morning has now come to life. I sit in the jungle amid the sounds of the rainforest, listening through my stethoscope to a beating heart. Children are in the distance playing, and the chatter of other patients fills my ears, creating the blend of the perfect symphony, a compliment to the harmony of healing taking place. There's a lot of magic happening here. We bond with them, we connect with them. And the mothers just hand over their children, and even if their kids are crying, their mothers are like, no, these people are going to help. Little Julie hasn't been to school for the last month because it was just too painful to walk. Come to find out that she hadn't been walking because she had ha had a um, large sebaceous cyst in her groin area that was probably, I would say, um, bigger than a tennis ball. And it had been festering for so long that her skin was actually starting to pull apart. There was a number of us that went over and just the pain that she was in, she couldn't even stand. And I remember looking at our instructor at one point and thinking, I know we don't have exactly what we need to make it better, but we have to do something. And so they did the best they could with the supplies they had. Somebody yep. grabbed the, a one pack and some gloves. Yep. Even though the procedure that we did to drain it was so painful and you could just see the look in her eyes how painful it was. And she seemed to understand that, that this was what was making her sick and not feel well and unable to walk. Okay. <laughs> After a second visit, the cyst had drained to half its original size, and Julie was back on her feet. She was probably one of the strong, strongest children I've ever known. Um, she faced it head on. In Belize, Julie Pierce, the Northlands News Center.